Hey guys, uh, my name is Dr. Santi Dyer and um, I'm going to be doing a series of uh, reviews in medical biochemistry. Uh, these reviews should be suitable for medical students as well as those of you uh, who will be taking uh, step one. Uh, so this is the first of the reviews and if you do uh, like these, uh, I will uh, certainly uh, do more of these. I'm going to begin with uh, carbohydrate metabolism. And uh, I will also be using a number of uh, questions. Uh, and these questions, I must uh, emphasize, uh, have been written by myself in preparation for this review. They have not been taken from any other source or institution. Okay, so uh, let's uh, begin uh, uh, with, a, uh, with a problem. Uh, uh, so here we have a... Uh, a 22-year-old woman, uh, she complains to the physician that for the past uh, year she has been developing abdominal pain followed by vomiting uh, each time she has uh, candy or fruit. So after various labs were performed, uh, she was diagnosed with having a mutation in one of her uh, glyph glyph glycolytic enzymes. And the question uh, that we need to address here is uh, well, which uh, glycolytic enzyme is this uh, most likely to be? So let's uh, take a look at the glycolysis pathway and then we will uh, come back to this, uh, this question. Okay. So, um, so the glycolysis, as, as uh, uh, many of you are aware, uh, is the uh, metabolism of uh, glucose, glycolysis, the breaking up of glucose uh, to extract energy. And just something important to remember is that, uh, you know, plants make uh, carbohydrates uh, from carbon dioxide and water. And uh, we as humans uh, consume the carbohydrates and we breathe out the carbohydrate as carbon dioxide and water. So isn't that amazing? So, um, uh, so there's a very delicate interplay between uh, man and, uh, and plants. Okay, so uh, once glucose is in the bloodstream, it gets into the cell, uh, and uh, once it enters the cell, uh, it is converted to glucose 6-phosphate by an enzyme uh, known as hexokinase or glucokinase. Now, please remember, there's a, there's a very big difference between uh, uh, the activities of hexokinase and glucokinase. In fact, glucokinase is uh, hexokinase 4. Uh, glucokinase is uh, the isoenzyme found in hepatic cells, in hepatocytes, uh, whereas hexokinase is found in a number of tissues, particularly skeletal muscle. So the difference between uh, hexokinase and glucokinase is that glucokinase has a high Km for glucose. It means it has a low affinity for glucose, uh, which implies that uh, glucokinase will only act on glucose where the gl blood glucose concentration is high. Uh, this gives the other tissues of the body an opportunity to utilize the glucose uh, before the, the liver uh, takes up the glucose and converts it to glycogen. Okay. So in the first step of glycolysis, we actually use up energy. Uh, we use up an ATP. Uh, and uh, <clears throat> the resultant product, as I mentioned, is glucose 6-phosphate. This is an ionic compound. It is essentially becomes trapped in the cell and cannot leave the cell. So it is now committed to glycolysis unless uh, uh, we cleave off the, the phosphate on this exposition. Uh, so the glucose 6-phosphate is then isomerized to fructose 6-phosphate. And... Uh, once fructose 6-phosphate is formed, it can be phosphorylated once again uh, by using a, a phosphate donated by ATP. Uh, and this then forms a fructose 1,6-bisphosphate. Uh, now this uh, step, the conversion of fructose 6-phosphate to fructose 1,6-bisphosphate is um, the major regulatory step in, uh, in the glycolysis pathway. And uh, very important to remember that the enzyme that catalyzes this reaction is uh, PFK1 or uh, phosphofructokinase 1. And uh, this enzyme is regulated uh, 
very finely, depending on whether the, uh, the person has, uh, has had a meal or whether, whether they are in the fasting state. And the way that happens is that there's another enzyme called PFK2, phosphoproctokinase 2, and this enzyme um, can be activated by insulin. So when a person has had a meal, insulin is released, it activates PFK2. PFK2 in turn uh, produces fructose 2,6-bisphosphate. The fructose 2,6-bisphosphate then uh, activates PFK1, um, enhancing the, the conversion of fructose 6-phosphate to fructose 1,6-bisphosphate. So uh, in the fed state, insulin is produced, it increases the activity of PFK2, which in, whose product in turn will activate PFK1. So this is very important and it's, it's high yield material, uh, something that students should be aware of. Glucagon, on the other hand, uh, its role is to increase uh, blood glucose and to decrease glucose utilization. So we would expect then that uh, the release of glucagon in the fasting state uh, will inhibit BFK2 and therefore decreasing the amount of uh, fructose 2,6-bisphosphate and there has a negative regulatory role on PFK1. Okay? Now, <clears throat> after fructose 1,6-bisphosphate is formed, um, we have an enzyme called allylase, and allylase breaks up the 6-carbon sugar into two 3-carbon sugars. So as you will see here, uh, the fructose 1,6-bisphosphate is split into glyceraldehyde 3-phosphate and dihydroxyacetone phosphate. Okay? Now, what is very important for you as students to note is that there are two forms of allylase. There's allylase A and allylase B. And it's very important that you know the difference between allylase A and allylase B. Allylase A and B are both able to carry out this reaction of the conversion of fructose 1,6-bisphosphate to the two 3-carbon sugars. Allylase B, on the other, other hand, is able to metabolize fructose one six, sorry, fructose one phosphate. Okay, so please remember, allylase B can metabolize fructose one phosphate. Now there are some individuals who have a mutant form of allylase B, and so essentially the allylase B becomes ineffective, and therefore they are unable to metabolize fructose one uh, phosphate. And if that happens, the fructose 1-phosphate can accumulate and it leads to a syndrome um, known as a hereditary fructose intolerance characterized by abdominal pain and vomiting and various other symptoms. The conversion of dihydroxyacetone to glyceraldehyde 3-phosphate uh, will continue to proceed because the glyceraldehyde 3-phosphate is constantly move down the glycolysis pathway. So essentially, what happens here is the fructose 1,6-bisphosphate is converted to two molecules of glyceraldehyde 3-phosphate, which will continue in the glycolysis pathway. 